today I want you to cash out and sell those shares. He sold them. I got my 4,000. I know people who lost 40,000. Huh. I know people who lost 20 something thousand. A million. Telling you. And when I told them, they said, ah, how did you know? How did you know? I said, I didn't know, but, you know, I just did what I had to do. Yeah. So that's what we're telling you. You see, you have to diversify your investment. And that's what Solomon is telling us here. Again, you see, it has often been said that a ship in a harbor is safe, right? Uh-huh. But is that what ships are built for? Mm. No. You don't build ships to put in a harbor. No. Do you buy your car and put it in a garage and lock it up? No. No. You buy it, you buy it to use it, right? Yes. That is what the money is there for. You earn it to invest it, to use it. You earn it to use it. You see, the best way to use money is to use money to buy yourself what you need for yes. yourself. You use money to buy influence. Mm. You know how you buy influence? When you come here and you bring your tongues off and you're dancing before God, you're buying God's influence. Mm. Because God is saying, oh, look at this, my child. She had only $500. And she bought this $100 gift for me. Okay, I'll surprise her. Amen. Yes, because you're buying influence. That is why you see in Nigeria people bribe. It's to buy influence. That is why God says, bring your tithes into my house and see if I will not bless it. Because when you go there, you are showing gratitude to God. You're thanking Him for things He hasn't even done that He's thinking of doing. And when you do that, He's saying, okay, you know what, I will do it. It's like, for instance, Christmas time. You don't even tell your dad or mom and you buy them a gift. You know what's going to happen? The same way she would travel or go somewhere and she would remember you and say, that's my child that remembered me for Christmas. I'm going to surprise her again. And she will buy something double your own. Mm -hmm. See, that is how God works. God will now double yours. And then you come again and say, oh, God, you did that. I'm going to double it again. And God will now double it again. So you surprise that you, this what you consider small becomes very big. And that is what we need to start doing in the house of God. God did not did not anoint us as Christians for us to remain inside this small house. Amen. No. Just like the ship mm. not in the harbor. He created us to go out. He Amen. said, go out and spread the gospel, baptizing them in the name of Jesus Father, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. He said to the disciples, sit down. When you sit down, I will be there. No. He said, go out into the world. You see, that is the purpose for which you are called into this sanctuary. Amen. The truth is that every investment you make spiritually and financially do with praying and faith. Amen. You see, sometimes as Christians, we pray, but we don't exercise our faith. Amen. Faith is the assurance of something you are hoping for. Amen. You see, you are hoping for a blessing. You have not seen it. But you believe it. Yes. You believe you have received it. Yes, amen. It's a conviction of unseen realities. You have not seen it, but you know it's real, it's there. And I'm going to get it. And that is why Jesus says, You cannot follow him unless you follow him by faith. Walk by faith and not by, by sight. sight. You don't have to see, if you are a Christian, to believe. Blessed are those who have not seen but believe. Amen. If you want a house, step out by faith. Amen. Invest in, pray about it, Amen. and you will see that you will get it. Amen. Amen. Tell God exactly what you want. Amen. See, that's one thing with us as Christians. We go to God and general prayer. I want a house. No, 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 no. Tell him you want a single family or a multiple family or two family or a ten family or one hundred family. Tell him what you want. It's specific. That's what he's going to give to you. Yes. You'll be surprised. That's what he's going to bring your way. If you tell him you want uh, a condominium, you've been, you've been in one condominium. Mm. Or you tell him what you want and you will get it. Then if you go to the next verse, it says, Divide your portion to seven or even to eight, eight. 
for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. Again, it's telling us the same thing. But if, when, it have, when, you have, when you have something, spread it out. Because you don't know something might happen, just like the stock market that crashed. I had my investment, I had some mutual fund, I had some in the bank. But as soon as the stock market was starting, I took the money here, I made my profit, I took it and put it in the bank. So if you spread your investment out in the same way, you don't know what's going to happen, you have it all around the place. What, that, what does that do for us as Christians? It's saying that the word of God, we should spread it out. Spread it out. Don't just let us come to the church every day, Jerry Moyama, Jerry Moyama out, Jerry Moyama in. Let us go out. Let us spread the ministry. Let us have an outreach ministry. Let us have a charity ministry. Let us have a hospital ministry. Let us allow people who have gifts to use it in those ministries. As you spread out those ministries, as God blesses this person, that person, and that person's ministry, guess what? The church is growing. Man. We will not grow if we just focus on Jiri Moyama in, Jiri Moyama out. out. The apostles didn't do that. Why should we be doing that? They didn't do that. They went, even Paul went from city to city, just kept traveling. He didn't even have time for himself. But what was, what was happening? Everywhere he went, people were getting converted. People were getting converted. And we see, everywhere he went and he got into trouble, what happened? God redeemed him out of that trouble. God took him out of the troubles. So we see here that Paul, I mean, Solomon is telling us, do not put all your eggs in the basket. So, in chapter 11, 3 to 6, it says, if the clouds are full, they pour out rain upon the earth. And, when, and whether a tree falls towards the south or, or towards the north, Wherever the tree falls, there it lies. He who watches the wind will not sow. He who looks at the clouds will not reap. What Solomon is trying to tell us here is that no matter how you look at life, Man. you do not control your life. Man. You cannot determine anything. You can decide to go to work one day with your umbrella, it won't rain. Yes. And then you forget your umbrella and you start to rain. Yes. And then you say, oh yes. It's in the house, or it's in the trunk of my car. When you get to that trunk, you get soaked. And you know why sometimes? It might be a rain of blessing that God has determined will touch you. Amen. And you will forget an umbrella in your car. <laughs> but you'll be afraid to go in that rain. So, so sometimes when things happen, just be thankful to God. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's, and mm -hmm. everything, everything in it. Amen. The world and those who dwell inside it. So, a farmer shouldn't wait. Oh, let's see if it's going to rain before it goes. He just goes and plants the seed. Yes. If it rains fine, if it doesn't rain, he goes there and looks at it again. And that is what God is asking us to do. To so just go on preaching the word, doing our part Man. in the ministry of God, Man. and allowing God to do the blessing. So we see, in life, there is no time that is the perfect time. There is nothing like that in life. Today, we are here, it's sunny. In some part of the world, people are sleeping. Hmm. At this time. Nothing is perfect. And there's a part of the world where they are even confused. If you go to the, I think in Southeast Asia, there's a country there where they are confused, they don't know whether, to, whether they want to... Uh, you know, stay on this side of the world or on this side of the world. They don't, they don't know. They're confused. And there's some part of the world where the sun only comes out maybe three months of the whole year. Mm. So nothing is perfect. But I will know one thing for sure that everything is under the perfect control of Jehovah. Man. And so if you at this time are not doing anything in the house of God, this is the time to get involved. Mm -hmm. Stop delaying. Step out in faith. Mm -hmm. Whatever God has called you to do, this is the time to not look back, mm -hmm. but to move on mm -hmm. to that new level that God has determined 
that you should reach. Just as you do not know the path of the 